me just lean back a little bit, guys. Okay. Sit back, relax, get some popcorn, and have a barf bucket ready to go. Because we're talking about my first ever restaurant job. This goes back to uh, after I graduated from high school. I worked at this one restaurant during the work study program. This is out of DeWitt, Iowa. Uh, the place does not exist no more. It's a different business. Uh, I don't know what it is now. And maybe some of my local subscribers will tell me out in DeWitt will tell me what it is now. Uh, as far as I know, last time I was out there, it looks like it's a closed down business uh, at time. Yes, I'm talking about my... Uh, what I'm going to talk about is if we would have had Kitchen Nightmares, the TV show back in the 80s, this place would have qualified for it. Easily qualifies for it. Uh, yeah, like I said, sit back, get some popcorn, and have a bar bucket ready to go because what I'm about to say is going to make you sick. Uh, let's just talk about some good things. Uh, but I'll just talk about most of the bad things. Uh, right now, the good things was what I started as my, I started as a short order cook. Uh, at this place called Martha's Cafe. It does not exist no more. It was in DeWitt, Iowa. And I don't know what kind of business it is now, but it looks like they have never, uh, because of the history of the location, uh, it was technically uh, run down. I, and I'll tell a story what what a bank almost offered me. And when they did, I turned it down right away, but I'll get to that part in a little bit. But uh, when I took over the short order cook, uh, I, you know, do all those orders and all that stuff. I was told I have to do it a certain way. Uh, have to do it the way I, was, I got trained. Uh, when we cook hamburgers, hamburgers and cheeseburgers, we I was told you got to press to get all those juices out of the burger. Uh, what happens if you press the juices out of the hamburger? You get a dry hamburger. So when I made my own lunch and have a hamburger, I never pressed the juices out. And I had customers next to me say, "Why are your hamburgers so juicy?" I said, "Because I didn't press my ham. I don't press the hamburger meat." But when it comes to paying customers, I told this to a customer. When it comes to paying customers, we have to make sure that there's no juices, so does somebody doesn't get burnt. And so she doesn't want to get sued or <laughs> something like that. She has some crazy excuses, poor excuses and that. But, uh, yeah, because she felt that if someone burned themselves on a hot, juicy hamburger, she afraid she was going to get sued and all that stuff. That's why a lot of people don't buy hamburgers uh, and all that stuff because we press the juices out of them. Uh, when I make pancakes, I've always liked my pancakes light and fluffy. Uh, yeah, I, I got in trouble many times for making light and fluffy pancakes. I say, did you notice our orders of pancakes that we were having? Our orders of pancakes has increased when I make them. And how many orders of pancakes you sold all day when the owner makes them? None. Uh, because no one doesn't want to have time in the mornings uh, before I get there to cook pancakes. Uh, the owner who cooked their pancakes, you have to take a hammer and chisel to them. Uh, yes, I had those pancakes uh, that, that the owner cooked, and it's it's between night and day. I said, you rather have a nice fluffy pancake that melts in your mouth, or you have to take a hammer and chisel to it. <laughs> Make your choice. <laughs> As a short order cook, I was not allowed to season the food. I was not allowed to add any additional spices to anything. It's why the food was kind of on a has a bland flavor. When you go eat out at a fast food place, I said, I'd rather have a fast food uh, because at least it's seasoned and it usually has a uh, flavor. Our food just didn't have no, really had no flavor to it at all, uh, technically, and uh, all that stuff. Uh, right now, uh, the food wise, I would say, I'm just going to put it substandard because I'll tell you why it is substandard here in a bit. Just a reminder, I'm talking about up my very first restaurant job right out of high school from DeWitt, Iowa. And that's where I worked for about eight years. I wasted eight years with this place. Why? I, because I think I had other ideas. Always I was sick in my mind. 
Now let's talk about the kitchen nightmares uh, of the whole kitchen. Uh, let's put it this way. The whole place is unorganized. I had a lazy staff to work with. Uh, I mean, t my last couple of years was just laziness. Uh, they put everything on me. On, on They put everything on my shoulders. And I, I literally had to carry the place almost. And it was a really stressful situation. Uh, the equipment I have to deal with was subpar, if not outright health dangerous. Uh, I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, yes, I said health dangerous. Our refrigerator is not the best for restaurants, but at least our food would be safer in our refrigerator what the refrigerators I had to deal with. Wow. I just, well, just to be fair, uh, to, uh, of course she has passed away since, uh, I think a few years ago and all that stuff, but, uh, just to be fair, that was not the original location of, uh, actually it is the original location of Martha's Cafe, but that was not the original building. The original building burnt down, uh, burnt down a few years earlier, they remodeled, and uh, let's put it this way, they didn't put a whole lot of thought to this place when they remodeled it. Uh, the kitchen was awfully small, uh, the dining room was kind of okay, uh, just no shades, no real decorations at all, it just looks like a bland location. I mean, I've seen old time cafeterias look better uh, shaped than this. Um, it didn't really look pleasing to the eye and all that stuff and uh, unfortunately like I said uh, like I was about going to say is I was button heads with the owner all the time uh, with, the, with the owner uh, and all that stuff for other reasons and, and other issues uh, but then the restaurant itself had issues why it was allowed to stay open uh, the health department guy who uh, who was doing the health inspections during those years it's also his favorite place for coffee and that for coffee and pie and that's why he I guess that's why he wanted to keep it open as long as possible but everybody else I I, I mean if I would have inspect this place I would have shut it down I mean I would have shut it down now let's talk about the equipment why I think it, it should have been shut down let's put it this way the dish area is only a three sink apartment, no uh, sanitizing machine at all. No uh, sanitizer, no sanitizing machine at all. Uh, it's just a three sink apartment and you gotta make sure the water is hot in all three sinks. Hot enough you can tolerate the, the, the hand washing. The rinse has had to be a little hotter, and the final rinse has to be super hot water, and it's hard to keep super hot water in that one. Uh, everything has to be air dry, but the problem is we couldn't let them air dry uh, because that water doesn't get that hot to order for it to air dry. So, unfortunately, you have to use towels to hand dry them. And towels is a no-no on these dishes because towels leave lint. On, on all that stuff. So you got to watch your towels. Uh, you can't use towels or linen or something like that because it leaves lint. So imagine having a nice lunch with a side of lint. That's not never good. And that. So then the cooking equipment that we had to use. The stove came from the original restaurant. It was not the best stove in the world. It looks like at times it looks like it was about ready to catch fire again. I think that was, don't know why they brought that stove back uh, and that. The steam table that we use to keep other food warm during the day, uh, just not um, not very good. The roast beef, I don't know why we're using roast beef all the time uh, because we don't sell it all. And guess what, we reuse it the next two to three days and after a couple of days it gets, you know, has a takes on an odd flavor uh, to a point it is uh, not safe. But this is, that's, that's, that's probably the reason why. Uh, beef has gotten very expensive last few years, but we waste a lot of beef, uh, technically, because uh, we don't use it all. 
we should have used a uh, a pre-slice uh, something like that but we don't want to do that either uh, slice roast beef I mean we could have just cut it we just cook it cut it cut it in slices pre-slice them and it's ready for lunch for slice roast beef I don't know but uh, it's just uh, it, it we didn't use the sharpest knives either it's hard to keep the knife sharp because everybody likes to cut themselves with it and that so you can't keep the knife uh, sharp the uh, the fryer we only had one fryer for everything uh, now with today's food allergies uh, now an average restaurant needs at least two to three fryers maybe four uh, nowadays because otherwise you have to put your non-meat products in one fryer you gotta put your beef in another fryer maybe your pork in another uh, fryer fish in another fryer and maybe your chicken is another fryer maybe you can blend your beef and chicken together I don't know but nowadays restaurants gotta have at least three to four maybe five fryers to keep everything separate because of the food allergies we only had one deep fat fryer that fried everything and when and it's and it's the most used item in the restaurant I had to work with so a lot of orders did not get out on time uh, in a timely manner because it was uh, a waiting list to get to use the fryer uh, anywhere from fish, chicken, fries, what onion rings, whatever uh, then you really can taste the odd flavors uh, when you have a french fry expected to be a t potato flavor it ends up taking a flavor of something else which is kind of like I said get that buff bucket ready to go tastes like shit okay the refrigerator and freezer units uh, this restaurant did not have a walk-in refrigerator slash freezer we just had a regular uh, it was an old school uh, I would say old school because it was used from uh, an old elementary school they was able to obtain a uh, when they built this place they was able to obtain a used refrigerator freezer system where you had uh, one combined as a refrigerator freezer and the other one was a oversized refrigerator with its freezer now here's the issue with those units I mean issues with those units the first main refrigerator where we get most of our stuff out for most of the day uh, it would be an easy grab because it's close to the stove it's not the coldest refrigerator uh, at all uh, it's not the coldest at all it, it is barely barely uh, health legal uh, let's put it that way the one freezer next to it that's probably the best unit of them all uh, technically but the other two has water issues, leaking issues, uh, the water condensing issues because the one we have to we have to dump out a container of water almost uh, during the summer months, almost three times a day, and uh, during the winter it's usually a t uh, about twice a day. But during the summer, it's about three or four times a day, and it just leaks water. And the other freezer, it leaks, there's a water leak in that one, it throws everything. So every time you open it, it just looks like a big block of ice. We couldn't get nothing out of that freezer at all, because everything is frozen solid in water, because it was leaking. Every time we thaw it out, we have to throw all that meat away, talk about waste for money. Uh, and that is just not a good situation at all. Uh, this whole kitchen was a kitchen nightmare uh, when it comes to uh, uh, refrigerating, storing. We were we were supposed to be dating when we make salads, like all that. We're supposed to put dates of when they're made and what, how long they're supposed to last. We don't put that. We. Every time we get a health inspection, we, we lose points in that area. But how they kept us open, like I said, the health inspector at the time needed a ch place for a cheap coffee and a slice of pie. Okay, now we get into the finances ends of this. Uh, the owner has kept the prices low enough to accommodate, I was told this by the owner themselves, 
to accommodate to people who's on fixed income, Social Security, and all that stuff. Unfortunately, when prices rises, uh, and they do, we had the, for the eight years, I wasted my time there. Uh, technically, I wasted my time there. If I had relived those eight years, I would have quit after the first few weeks uh, of that place. But uh, I was trying to be loyal uh, because I'm going to tell you right what what to get some experience, and I'll get to the part where the bank wanted to wanted me to buy the place. Uh, technically, right now let's hang on a second. Okay, for the eight years we've been there, we saw about maybe uh, we saw our prices as increase. But our menu prices didn't really increase. Uh, we're supposed to, every time we see an increase in labor, uh, our labor costs was through the roof. I mean, our labor costs would have been at least, uh, our labor costs at times could have been 40%. Because we just had too many people on staff uh, during the whole day. We should have sent people home when it slowed down, but they didn't. Uh, because labor costs was just so high. I mean, labor costs was the biggest problem that we had to deal with, and all that stuff. I mean, just could have just did breakfast, and you would have been fine for the whole day. But uh, but they decided to go for breakfast to uh, all the way up to almost dinner time. And I mean, you should have just closed the place down after lunch. And usually, lunch ends around two to three o'clock. But she just wanted the afternoon coffee people and selling coffee at 1986 prices from 1986 to 1992 or 94, 25 cents a cup. You can't make money in that. That doesn't pay your bills. Everybody else at the time period was selling their coffee from anywhere from 50 cents to 75 cents. I've heard there was an averaging about 75 cents. And you get free refills uh, at the time back in that money. Now today, you go to a coffee to the store, your average cup of coffee, uh, just regular standard coffee, probably starting around a dollar and a half to a dollar seventy-five uh, right now as it is, uh, and it's free refills too. But uh, they have considered labor costs and that too on top of that. Uh, I mean, the, the stuff got so expensive that we were not able to raise, we're not raising our prices to accommodate that uh, because she was afraid she was going to lose customers. And what happened, our paycheck starts to bounce like basketball. So I think that was my last straw right there. When I had three or four paychecks, was not able to get cashed because there was no funds because the owner owed so much money. Uh, to distributors, to uh, uh, to other people. I also owed money to the bank for the bank loans that helped rebuild the place. She still owed that. Uh, I was told by the bank, uh, when well, the bank pitched me the idea uh, about possibly maybe taking over, and I said I had no collateral, and collateral is usually you have to put stuff on the line, and I asked him, do you have a, a, a risky business loan? Do, you, you do. And they don't even do risky business loans anymore because of that uh, situation. So uh, I said I had no interest into it. Uh, I really had no interest into it because I told them that I told the bank flat out that the place needed a total renovation, a total renovation. It sounds like if, if it's if it's one of those one if videos. I'm just going to do this really quickly. What if if I got the bank loan and what if I was able to turn that place around? Would it have been successful today? Uh, possibly it m may not because I'll tell you why. The restaurant competition is really fierce. Uh, some restaurants will pop in. They have a good run. Then they f fade and and die. Usually franchises usually last a little longer. Uh, just a mom and pa's that's been around for years and still doing strong. Congratulations to them. That is a that's a test of time. But uh, my final years at uh, Marcus Cafe that we saw 
two new family restaurants open up, uh, new competition, new owners, new ways of uh, presenting their food. Even if it looks like the same old hamburger, it's just a different way that they produce it and all that stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a little break here. Real quick, I gotta charge up this uh, camera. Let's get to the point. Uh, I think I was at the. Uh, what if I took it over? Uh, the built the whole building. If the bank would have gave me the risky loan, uh, I probably would just. Uh, I would have kept the building as is. I would probably make it more attractive on the inside. Maybe some curtains, shades, or whatever. Maybe a new lighting uh, system. Uh, at the time of the time period, I probably would have done away the small apartment, uh, made that for a more uh, useful storage uh, area for canned goods, and uh, would have just did a whole new kitchen, a uh, whole new stove, grill, uh, steam table, take advantage of the steam table during the uh, Sunday breakfast, uh, maybe like turn it like a take it out to the uh, dining room, turn it into like a, a little buffet station, uh, something like that, uh, during Sunday breakfast, uh, something like that. Just put some quick foods in that thing, uh, technically, in the way. Uh, the fryer situation, I would have done a whole new fryer system. Uh, get about three or four fryers, like I said. Uh, this way you keep your fish in one fryer, your potatoes and onion rings in another fryer and your breaded beef, pork and in another fryer and maybe breaded chicken on another fryer or something like that. Some different fryers for each item, uh, technically. But your non-meat like potatoes and onion rings, that can go in the same fryer uh, and that. But everything else has to be all in their separate ways, uh, separate ways in cooking them. Uh, the refrigerator system, yeah, I would have got a whole new refrigerator system. If you can't use a walk-in or can't get a walk-in to put in, uh, I would have just done, uh, I would have just done, uh, that too. I would have redone the restrooms. The restrooms was also an issue there. Uh, kind of small, cramp. Uh, I would have took out the, uh, where there was an office that used to be held the, uh, at one time used to be the district attorney back in the day, back in the 80s. Uh, everybody knew what happened to him <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> but, uh, uh, comes down to, uh, uh, that would, that, that would be the whole new restrooms right there. I would have just changed that to a whole new restrooms right there. Uh, more comedy, more pleasing. Uh, expand the, uh, kitchen a little bit bigger if I can. Uh, just do more prep areas at least. It'd be just a whole redesign. It would have been a total, like I said, it would have been a nightmare anyway from start to finish. Uh, it would require the business to be closed for another year or two just to do the, the renovations, uh, technically. So that would have been, uh, not a good idea and it would be further in hole in that. Uh, like I said, the reason I quit uh, that place after eight years, don't know why I worked there for eight years. That's one thing. Having checks bounce like basketballs uh, to a point I couldn't afford to come to work anymore because my checks were getting bounced. And of course, the day I quit was the day that she mentioned that it's hard to find good help. Uh, it's hard to find good help when you can't pay your help. Uh, that's why your help ends up quitting, uh, technically. That's why I end up quitting there and that. So, uh, yeah, eight years of waste of my life from high school till 1994 is when I said, see ya, deadbeat. <laughs> and that stopped bouncing my checks. It's every time I try to turn the place into uh, that people to enjoy, uh, it gets literally uh, destroyed by the owner. So basically, the owner didn't really care. And I made a mistake once, and Angie can testify this. When Angie and I first got together, I took her there for lunch. And yes, the hamburger was hard as a hockey puck, and the fries taste like fish. Yeah. 
I could have, Angie and I could have parted ways right there. <laughs> that was back in uh, uh, 19, uh, that happened in, back in 1998. I think she officially closed in 2001 or 2002 because the debt was just so freaking high for her and that. And like I said, a lot of for good. For some help. reason, the camera turned off in that last clip. I was just trying to say it's hard to find good help uh, nowadays. Uh, especially in it, if they end up quitting and that. So, uh, yeah, eight years of my life wasted on a dream that I knew was not going to happen uh, in a way. But if, it, if I was successful at it, I don't think I would have lasted very long in it because, like I said, uh, when it comes to mom and pa type restaurants, uh, the competition was pretty fierce. Uh, didn't have to worry about the fast food and franchise places, but uh, when it comes to the mom and pa, it's more vicious than you think it is. And for the ones who are in it for years, congratulations to them. I hope everybody keeps supporting them and that. Right now, that's just what I had to go through for my first job. And it was eight years. It was a lot of headaches, a lot of stress. And I think I could have done better by going someplace else if I was smart enough to go someplace else. And I didn't. I was trying to be too loyal with that uh, restaurant. Remember, this is Martha's Cafe, not in business no more, in DeWitt, Iowa. Right now we're out of here with this one. Uh, that was the history of my first job in that. So that was a long time ago. It seems like it was just yesterday. All right, we're out of here. Please like, share, subscribe, to the subscribe on the notification bell. Maybe Angie will talk about her first job. Who knows? We'll see what she does. All right, we'll talk to you guys later.